An update on the rumours surrounding CM Punk potentially returning to either WWE or possibly, surprisingly, going back to AEW. An update on Vince McMahon as he prepares to sell a considerable amount of TKO stock. The stock price has now been confirmed. John Cena reportedly undergoes a surgical procedure on his arm now that his WWE run has come to an end. The bunny has officially left All Elite Wrestling. An update on the interest that WWE had in Saray before she signed with a new Joshi promotion. An update on if Drew McIntyre could possibly join a specific team at Survivor Series War Games. News on why a match was pulled from AEW Rampage recently because one of the participants refused to put over their opponent. Jim Ross says he's going to be taking a break from AEW. Nick Aldis also possibly takes a shot at his former employer, the National Wrestling Alliance. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about who else but CM Punk. More details on his pro wrestling future. We have some suggesting he could go to WWE, but others this week thinking maybe, just maybe, cool heads can prevail, things can be smooth over, and hell can, quite frankly, freeze over, and possibly CM Punk could really go back to AEW. Well... As previously noted, CM Punk reportedly wanted to make a WWE return, but the company, quote, turned him down. And he's not expected back, not right anyway, for now. In regards to that claim that CM Punk was recently scheduled for a call with a few WWE board members, Dave Meltzer in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter noted that that story is not accurate. Meltzer stated the following about Punk potentially returning to WWE, quote, those in creative have not been told of anything involving him and those who would normally be in the know about these things, including on big surprises like Cody Rhodes stuff before anyone else, don't know anything. That doesn't mean he's not coming, just the stories regarding his coming aren't accurate, end quote. Now, of course, there has been this week, particularly after the ending of AW Dynamite, there has been internet and social media speculation about CM Punk possibly being the person wearing the devil mask on AEW television. There were seemingly multiple references to Punk during the November 8th, 2023 edition of AEW Dynamite that included the following. Anthony Bowens being thrown through glass. Obviously, Jack Perry, CM Punk, the real glass story. We know how that ended up. Kenny Omega referring to the Young Bucks as children. Punk said, quote, I work with effing children during the now infamous AEW All Out 2022 post-show media scrum. MJF calling himself the, quote, real world champion. Of course, CM Punk said the same thing while carrying around his version of the AEW. AEW World Championship, defining himself as the real world AEW champion. Now, in regards to this speculation that CM Punk could be the person wearing the devil mask, of course, he did previously say the greatest trick that the devil ever did was making you and convincing you the devil he didn't exist. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful wrote on Twitter, quote, it would be a gigantic work on everyone in the company if so, but I think it would also be an incredible reveal and story, end quote. So saying that it would be a big work considering that everyone is under the belief that CM Punk is no longer with the company, but it's pro wrestling, so you never know. So what are your thoughts on CM Punk at this point? Is he going to WWE? Is there some way somehow he's going to end up back in AEW under the devil mask? Or is that people working themselves into a shoot brother? Let me know your thoughts about that too in the comment section below. Now, a big story last night, certainly, was Vince McMahon selling a lot of TKO Group stock. This was announced yesterday, but we've now actually got more details because a further press release has been uh, announced and been put out there by TKO Group Holdings. Now, let's actually get into what they said. Now, the revelation yesterday was that Vince McMahon would be selling 8.4 million shares of TKO stock. Another announcement has since been made. This announcement did actually come at actually 1 a.m. Eastern, so very, very early in the morning, and it said... Quote, TKO Group Holdings, a premium sports and entertainment company, today announced the pricing of its previously announced underwritten public offering by one of its stockholders, Mr. Vincent K. McMahon of 8.4 million shares of the company's Class A common stock par, par value, and then gets into the value there, at a price to the public of $79.80 per share. Additionally, TKO has agreed to repurchase from the underwriter approximately $100 million of shares of Class A common stock being sold by the selling stockholder at a per share purchase price equal to the price payable by the underwriter to the selling stockholder. The selling stockholder will receive all of 
of the net proceeds from the offering, no shares are being sold by TKO. In connection with the offering, Ari Emanuel, TKO's chief executive officer and director Mark Shapiro, TKO's president, chief operating officer and director, and certain other of the TKO's directors purchased 12,531 shares, 12,531 shares and 10,650 shares respectively of TKO's class A common stock in the offering at the public offering price. Now it gets into, as we spoke about yesterday, Morgan Stanley and co being involved in this, etc, etc. But really the key points coming from this, as I mentioned, is that Vince's shares are being offered at $79.80 per share. That's approximately where it's in, in the pre-market right now. To quote, TKO has agreed to repurchase from the underwriter approximately $100 million of the shares, end quote. And that's the key thing coming out of it as well, that Ari Emanuel and Mark Shapiro are, have each bought 12500 131 shares uh, that's equal to about one million dollars in market value and quote certain other of TKO's directors have bought 10,650 shares that's equal to about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the market as well now of course as I mentioned this is still a developing story still a breaking news story it's going to be interesting today if we get any more news and information regarding Vince McMahon's future when it comes to TKO and WWE what this means for the long term is this a case of, once again, his power dissipating in control not only of the WWE, but his overall control of TKO? Of course, as of right now, he is still the executive chairman of this newly formed publicly traded company. So again, if we get any more details on that later today, we'll let you know. But what are your reactions to all of this? What are your reactions to Vince McMahon selling 30% of his stock? And what do you think it means for the future of not only Vince McMahon, but WWE and TKO as well? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Now, another big change coming to TKO, specifically WWE, WWE includes sponsorships at the moment and Vince McMahon has given his blessing to more WWE changes. For decades, WWE's presentation had stuck to really the same principles. There's been some kind of titantron in the arena, a ramp leading to the ring and blank rails or barricades between the fans and the action. Meanwhile, the ring has been a literal blank canvas free of logos or advertising. However, that could be about to change. Vince McMahon has traditionally been against advertising and logos being featured on the ring canvas and ringside area, but his stance has now shifted. It was noted on the TKO Group's most recent earnings call that McMahon had agreed to allow advertising in these areas. Writing in the Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer discussed the change in philosophy, saying, quote, Another change you can expect is the look of the ringside area. In the past, Vince McMahon was a proponent of a clean ring, meaning no advertising on the mats, the barricades, or around the ring. Obviously, that has now changed due to the influence of Nick Khan. They note that Vince is no longer thinking that way and that advertising in and around the ring will be opening up more advertising inventory and they are very happy McMahon agreed to it. Of course, on November 7th, the TKO group, which encompasses both WWE and the UFC, announced its third quarter financial results. A new legal filing to go along with the results featured two new sections related to Vince McMahon, with the executive chairman discussed under, quote, risk factors. The document acknowledges that Vince McMahon's, quote, membership on our board could have adverse financial and operational impacts on our business, end quote. Of course, more recently, we had the Vince McMahon announcement that he was put, be going to be putting up a significant significant amount, about 30% of his current ownership of TKO as well, which we covered earlier on. Now, regarding all the moving and shaking in TKO right now, of course, when the merger was completed between WWE and UFC, the first thing that happened were cuts in the company, both at an office level and also at a talent level on the WWE roster. In September, WWE let go of them more than 100 office employees following the merger with UFC, and the cuts didn't stop there. A week later, the company released a number of wrestlers across both the main roster and NXT, with the likes of Dolph Ziggler and Mustafa Ali being let go. The company also secured a new deal for SmackDown to leave Fox in 2024, and the contract is said to be worth around $1.4 billion. It was reported that this led to frustration within WWE, with the monster new TV deal announced on the same day that the talent cuts were made. The TKO Group, the parent company of WWE and UFC, has now confirmed on its latest investors' 
call that the cuts will continue. Writing in the Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer noted the cuts will come from eliminating jobs that overlap between the two companies. Quote, the company noted there will be a great decrease in expenses in eliminating jobs in IT, marketing, finance, human resources, and legal when it comes to overlapping personnel in UFC and WWE who can do those jobs for both companies. They expect to save $50 million to $100 million, and the figure was said to be expected to be on the high end of this range, with 75% of the savings being on the books for 2024. So certainly expect more cuts and changes to be coming soon. Now, let's talk about John Cena undergoing a surgical procedure. But actually, he's provided a health update today. 16-time world champion John Cena has shared a health update after his recent match at Crown Jewel. Cena lost to Solo Sokoa and looked to be saying goodbye after the match, at least for now. The Hollywood's actor strike has now ended with SAG after and the AMPTP forming a tentative agreement. With Cena previously stating that his WWE run would end when the strike ended, it is unclear when we'll next see him on WWE television. John Cena has now taken to social media to thank orthopedic surgeon Jeff Dugas for a procedure he had at Andrew Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center in Birmingham, Alabama. Noting that he had one arm fix, Cena tweeted, quote, Thank you, Jeff Dugas and your entire team in Birmingham. One arm fixed, clean and headed for therapy. One arm left to go. Thank you again and see you ASAP for the next one. Now, including dark matches, Cena wrestled seven bouts during his most recent WWE run, ending with his loss to Solo Sokoa at the November 4 Crown Jewel Premium Live event. Now, he actually recently had a, a movie scrapped completely. Uh, John Cena, according to The Hollywood Reporter, was involved in a hybrid live action and animation film starring Cena himself, and it was called Coyote vs. Uh, Acme, uh, and it's been entirely scrapped by Warner Brothers Discovery. Now, with the film's director referencing test audiences in a statement, it seems that only a lucky few will have ever gotten to see John Cena star in this film, which was a live action and CG animation hybrid. According to the report, the film was believed to cost somewhere in the region of $60 million to $80 million, not only starred by John Cena, but also DC Studios co-head James Gunn was a producer on the film working on the story, but it's been scrapped a bit like Batgirl. We're never going to see it in the WBD archives forever lost. Now, The Bunny looks to be the latest name that has departed All Elite Wrestling. The Bunny is reportedly gone from AEW. After fans noticed The Bunny was removed from AEW's official online roster. Speculation picked up that she was gone from the company. Mike Johnson of PW Insider has since reported that the two sides mutually agreed to part ways, although more details are not currently known at this time. AEW has quietly released talent in the past with no official statement until the talent comes forward with the news or AEW president Tony Khan is directly asked. Such was the case more recently for Sonny Kiss, whose contract was not renewed uh, earlier this fall after largely being inactive on AEW's flagship shows in recent years. The Bunny, formerly known as Cherry Bob and Ali joined AEW in 2019 following a run with Impact Wrestling. The Bunny was one of, first, of AEW's first signings as she competed at the first Fighter Fest, Fight for the Fallen and All Out pay-per-views. She, of course, was aligned with The Butcher and The Blade. The Bunny also formed a partnership with Penelope Ford as the two feuded with Anna Jay and Tay Mello, culminating in a brutal street fight that aired on the New Year's Smash edition of AEW Rampage. She only had three AEW matches in 2023, suffering two singles losses to Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. Her last match took place on Rampage page in September as she teamed with Anna Jay and Taya Valkyrie in defeat to Britt Baker, Hikari Shida and Sky Blue. Now let's talk about one signing that didn't go to WWE and that was Saray. This was quite an interesting story that has got people a bit confused. Now on November 6th it was reported that Saray had signed with Suki Ban just days after it was reported that WWE held an interest in bringing her back to the company. The star known as Saray in WWE was only released by the company in March of 2023 earlier this year. While some saw this as a major snub for WWE with Saray known as one of the best female wrestlers in the world it might not be quite that simple. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted he'd been told that WWE wasn't really interested in a deal, describing previous reports as, quote, overblown. Quote, she signed with them, Suki Ban, the stuff about her in WWE, pretty overblown. I mean, from talking to people in WWE, it was like they were not really talking about her. Meltzer went on to explain that a potential return for Saray didn't really make sense. Quote, she wanted out. Hey, look, they didn't do anything with her. She sat there for the last six months of her contract and never did a thing. It's like, whatever, they 
they didn't see it in her. They gave her a really bad gimmick. Why would you want to go back? So anyway, that's the situation with her. So when it comes to Saray, it was a case of actually they weren't reportedly that interested. Now, Drew McIntyre, could he be set to compete in War Games this month? But it looks like he could be on the villainous team of the Judgment Day. Following recent speculation, a War Games match has now been made official for the November 25 WWE Survivor Series War Games PLE. As of this recording, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor, and JD McDonough will represent the Judgment Day against Sami Zayn, Jey Uso, Cody Rhodes, and World Heavyweight Champion Seth Freakin' Rollins. It has been rumored that these lineups are not final and that Drew McIntyre will wrestle alongside the Judgment Day team in this bout. Per Dave Meltzer in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, this idea is, quote, under consideration so there is a chance we will see the Scottish Warrior join forces with the Judgment Day. Meltzer writes, quote, There were reports that this will change and McIntyre will be a part of the Judgment Day team. I was just told that this is under consideration and could happen. That would lead to someone having to be added to the other side. This all comes after McIntyre was spotted talking to Rhea Ripley in the background of a recent episode of Monday Night Raw. McIntyre has had more overt interactions with the Judgment Day member since then, with Ripley approaching McIntyre after his match at Crown Jewel. Earlier on in the evening, McIntyre had successfully, unsuccessfully challenged Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title. On Monday's November 6th edition of Raw, McIntyre interestingly left a backstage interview segment when asked what was next for him. So we could see Drew McIntyre possibly join forces with the Judgment Day, possibly at Survivor Series. Now, this is a fascinating story about a match being pulled from AEW Rampage because one of the people involved didn't want to put his opponent over. According to Dave Meltzer in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the reason that the October 27 edition of AEW Rampage on TNT only had three matches instead of the normal four is because there was a scheduled match between Commander and Metalik booked for the show, but it didn't happen. According to Meltzer, the reason the match was pulled was because the former WWE star Metalik had actually refused to put Commander over, therefore indeed the match was completely scrapped. Now there's no word on if we're going to see Metalik any further in AEW. Of course he has appeared on Ring of Honor programming as well, but what are your thoughts on Metalik refusing to put Commander over and therefore the total match being scrapped entirely? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Absolutely fascinated to get your reaction to that. Now let's talk about Jim Ross taking a break from AEW, but he's not leaving All Elite Wrestling. Jim Ross is taking some time away from AEW on the latest Grilling JR podcast. The legendary announcer revealed they won't be traveling to Oakland, California to call the action for AEW Collision after being advised by his doctors to take some time to heal. While Ross didn't provide a specific timeline for his absence, he noted that his doctors want him to take a few weeks off before he can return to the road to fulfill his AEW duties. Quote, being off an airplane for a few weeks will be good to let my leg heal. So that's what I'm going to do, Ross said. I'm going to take a few weeks off. I'm not going to be on TV for a while until I can navigate the waters a little bit and get in that deep water. I love what I'm doing. Ross had injured his leg after suffering a fall in June, following which he took time away until returning to the collision commentary booth in August. Ross plans to keep a close eye on AEW's talented roster, despite being away from the company temporarily. Quote, We have a unique roster, Ross stress. There's so many guys that we need to help as much as possible to get over, but that goes for any wrestling show. That's the objective. You have one goal when you're on television in pro wrestling, get talent over. So I love doing that. I love that role. I love helping these young kids who ask questions like, did you watch my match or what do you think about this? Jim Ross thanked Khan for not only giving him the time off, but for being patient through his health issues. Ross confirmed that his AEW contract expires in a few months, but made it clear that he wants to stick around with the promotion. Quote, I'm not looking to go anywhere, Ross confirmed. It's just that I need to heal. That's all. Simplistically as that. My leg needs to heal. And the good news is that I'm getting is the wound is getting much better. So I am healing. Ross ruled out the possibility of working from home, explaining that his injury is aggravated by all the traveling he does. Quote, it's not a matter of pain tolerance. The pain comes when I I, when I get to the city I'm flying in, flying is my enemy right now. I like working for Tony. Ross continued, Tony's been good to me. He's taken great care of me. We just have a very unique relationship. I'm not high maintenance, even with a bad leg and stuff. I don't want to be high maintenance. Although AEW has several substitute announcers to cover for JR's absence, he still believes he's one of the best at his job and refuses to walk away from the business. Quote, With my ego as it is, I'm not going to let someone be better than me, Ross said. I work too many to build a relationship with our audience, an audience that I love and they love me. It's very emotional for me to talk about that, but I'm a big believer that things are going to get better. So Jim Ross taking a break. Of course, we get any more details as to when he's coming back. We'll let you know in the future. Finally, Nick Aldis seemingly has taken a shot at his full 
former employer, the National Wrestling Alliance. Now, it was announced this past Tuesday that WWE NXT will air on the CW network starting in October of next year. The news came ahead of reports that the CW was actually the network that the NWA's weekly TV show NWA Power and an unnamed reality TV series was going to air on. However, NWA's controversial drug-related spot at a recent pay-per-view created uncertainty regarding the TV deal for the promotion. Former NWA World Heavyweight Champion and current SmackDown General Manager Nick Aldis took to Instagram to take some shots at the promotion by sharing a graphic of NXT coming soon to the CW with the NWA's former theme music Into the Fire by Dokken. Aldis and the NWA parted ways in acrimonious circumstances as he was suspended by the NWA after he publicly announced on social media that he had asked for his release from the company in November 2022 and was also critical of the promotion. The WWE star's contract with the promotion was to expire in January 2023. He later called the brand, quote, toxic and accused NWA owner Billy Corgan of playing politics after he was replaced by Tyrus in the main event of the NWA 74 pay-per-view. Aldis, a two-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion, had been with the company since 2017. On the October 13 episode of SmackDown, Chief Content Officer Paul Triple H Levesque surprised the pro wrestling world by introducing Aldis as new SmackDown General Manager, Aldis being the GM for the Blue Brand. Meanwhile, Adam Pearce was promoted to the role of General Manager for Monday Night Raw. But there you go, guys. This latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.